Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our 2 p.m. service. You may go ahead and uh, take your seats. But talaga, when we are when we begin to go back and sing yung mga hymns from our forefathers in the faith, it hits differently. Alam mo yun? Um, anyway, uh, thank you, Joma, and the rest of our uh, worship team. We are currently on the second week. I think I forgot to mention this last week na we are starting a new series. Pero alam niyo naman yun, di ba? Pag December, Christmas series, okay? Uh, but uh, the title of our Christmas series is Unwrapping the Present. Of course, we all know that present is none other than Christ himself. And, uh, you know, one of the, the things that I, I tend to find on my feed pag Christmas time are, uh, are the videos of... Jollibee, okay. And maybe some of you have come across yung uh, kwentong Jollibee. Have you ever seen those videos of Jollibee? Okay. So usually meron sila pag uh, uh, Valentine's Day, okay, uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, and of course during Christmas. And I wanna show or share with you this video. I think this was this came out 2019 or the year before, uh, but I want us just to watch this vi- video. Is that it? No? One more? One more click? Okay. Okay, and you play it along from the back there. Ayan. Okay, there we go. Dear anak, Kumusta na ang aking bunsoy? Dapat nakasmile ha? Teka, smile! Okay na okay kami ni Papa. Masaya talaga dito. Okay ka lang. Okay ka, challenge tayo. This is not sponsored, by the way. Uh, 
But you know, whenever I watch, you know, I, parang there's only two responses when you ha- watch yung mga kwentong Jollibee, you know? It's either you're crying or you're hungry. <laughs> or both. Diba? But, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed watching that uh, video. And, you know, it, it's great to receive gifts during Christmas. Tawa. And just like in the video where, you know, the parents are abroad working to support their son and they can't come home, obviously. And so what they do is they give gifts. And sometimes when we give gifts or uh, sometimes gifts are given to fill a need. A need in this case was uh, the parents being with their child, with their son. Um, and so since they didn't as as the video showed us, they would send uh, these gifts, all right? And, and, and I can understand that kind of uh, scenario. Uh, when I was in high school and in my college years, uh, to, long story short, I was in Nigeria, kung alam ko nasa Nigeria, sa West Africa. I spent the first 14 years of my life there. Our whole family moved to the Philippines in 99. Uh, that's when I was, and I was in high school. And uh, my dad tried to start up a business here, but it didn't really do so well. So we had to go back to Nigeria. I mean, here na me and my siblings, my mom, but my dad to go back to support our family. And so for high school, college, uh, there were times where during Christmas, wala yung dad ko. Whoa, okay. Whew, I felt that. Did you feel that? <laughs> Okay, but he would as he would make a lot of effort to be able to join us during Christmas. But um, you know these things, imanga gifts, they're great, but they're not enough to fill the need that valuable relationships provide or bring into our lives. I mean, just as the the boy, the, the son was writing, Sana I can get the gift that I really was looking forward to, um, and much in the same way. Okay, if I can segue a little bit here. Uh, much like how our religious doings, the Christian things that we do, sometimes we try to do them to meet a need. And then that need, many times, is our need for salvation. But the reality is, all of these things that we do, we can do all of these religious works and do all of these good things, but they will not fulfill our need or will, it's not enough to fulfill our salvation, okay? That's why Christ had to come. He was the only one who could fulfill our salvation, who can, who, where we, or our lives can gain salvation from his death on the cross. You see, our greatest need for salvation was fulfilled through the greatest gift we have been given, and that is Jesus Christ. Nothing else, there's nothing that can fill our need for our salvation apart from Christ himself. And in the scriptures, John the Baptist was one of the first people to recognize Jesus for who he was. He was one of the first people to acknowledge and declare that this is the Son of God. And he was able to proclaim in John chapter one, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And I wanna, uh, our passage for today is found in John chapter one, verses 29 to 34, all right? And so if you have your Bibles, kindly turn with me to John chapter one, verse 29. If not, follow me as I read it on the screen. It says there, the next day, He, John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming toward him and said, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who ranks before me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing him with water that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness I saw the spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. Verse 33, I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the spirit descend and remain, this is is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and I have borne witness that this is the Son of God. Let us pray. Lord, thank you, Father God, for... Uh, allowing us to behold and to see Christ for who he really is. Thank you for opening up our eyes to bear witness 
that Christ truly is the Son of God. And Lord, we pray that as we receive this message today, may you open up our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, verses 30 to 34 actually gives the reasons, the understanding on kung bakit sina, or paano sinabi ni John, about how he was able to acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. So he's saying there, okay, I was the one who baptized, nakita ko yung dove, the one came down, I heard this voice saying that this is my son. I mean, who would not, you know, declare and acknowledge that Jesus really is the Son of God? So, verses 30 to 34 just explains the proclamation John the Baptist made in verse 29, where he says, Behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. And that is what I want to focus on, that statement alone, this afternoon. The first word we'll be looking at is the word behold. Behold. Ano ba yung behold? It means to look, to see here, to consider. Okay? And so, when John, in in, in verse 29, it says, he saw Jesus coming towards him. Then he declared, behold. It first began with John. He first acknowledged, he first received, he first saw Jesus for who he was before he began to declare to other people who were listening to him, this is Jesus. And the same for for us, if we want to be able to tell people about Christ, to tell tell people about who Jesus is and the truth about who he is, we first need to behold him. We first need to see him for who he is. We need to look upon him and acknowledge that Jesus truly is the son of God. God, amen? Now, uh, when John was, was uh, uh, declaring who Jesus was, proclaiming he was, he didn't say, behold, that this man is a great moral example, which he truly was. Uh, hindi niya sinabi, follow this man because he is a great example. Hindi niya sinabi, behold, this man is a great teacher of holiness, of love, how we are to live our lives. Therefore, follow this man. You know, listen to this man. He didn't say that. He didn't even say, behold, this man is a great leader who will change the nation. And if you look at the history of the Israelites, of the Jews, lahat sila naghihintay ng Messiah. And they had this idea that this Messiah, that Messiah that was coming, would rid them of the oppression that they were experiencing, would set them free, and would become their king and bring them to glory. That was the Messiah they had in mind. And so John could have said, Behold, this is the great leader that you have all been waiting for. But he didn't say that. Ano ba sinabi niya? He said, Behold, This is Jesus who is the sacrifice for sin. Behold, he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now, at this point, the Jews had the continuous practice of offering sacrifices of of animals, of, of offering the blood of animals, Okay, but the reality is, itong blood of the animals, whether it's a goat, a lamb, or uh, bull, whatever it is, can't really take away their sin. If you look in Hebrews 10, verse 4, it says, For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats and any other animal to take away sins. And so this whole practice from the beginning in the Old Testament, all the laws that were written, okay, for the atonement of sin, for the forgiveness of sin, all of these things, to take away the sins of the people, lahat po yun, it was just to foreshadow, to look forward, to tell the people, guys, lahat po ito, it's only temporary. We need to look forward to the finality for the final sacrifice. There is a final sacrifice. There is a sacrifice that once and for all na mangyayari. And it is coming. Okay? And so part of John's exclamation here is like he's telling the people, guys, ito na yun. This is he who has come. Ito na yung finality. He is the final sacrifice. He is the perfect sacrifice. This Jesus who is the Lamb of God who will take away the sin of the world once and for all. Kaya sinasabi niya, behold, guys, ito na yun. What you've been waiting for, what you've been longing for, you don't have to do this anymore. Jesus is here. Okay? He said, behold the lamb. You see, in the Old Testament, the law prescribed animal sacrifices. Usually a lamb. It could be other animals, goat, bull, whatever, but usually a lamb, because the lamb was a representation of purity and unblemishedness, or being unblemished. 
And these sacrifices were a way for the Jewish people to, uh, to make up for the wrongdoing. So when they sa temple, they would kill an animal, the lamb, and offer the blood to the priest so that there's the, to make up for their sin, the wrongdoing, so that they would be forgiven. At the same time, there would be that feeling that their sins have been removed. But the truth is, these were only temporary sacrifices. Okay, lahat po nito were just temporary. And they had to be done repeatedly. Every time you sin, okay, punta ka muna sa temple, nagsin ka ulit, balik ka ulit. And it was done repeatedly to ensure their good standing with God. Of course, they know about God. But at the same time, so that they have this idea, this, this thinking that they are right with God, they had to always go back to the temple to atone for their sins through these uh, offerings, through the, the blood of animals. And so these daily sacrifices, like all others, were simply to point people to the perfect sacrifice of Christ on the cross. Now, even when Christ was there, again, John was saying, John the Baptist was saying, behold the Lamb of God. Dine declare niya, this is He. Ito na po yun. He is here. He is the perfect sacrifice who came to put an end to all that you're doing. Yung paulit-ulit na ginagawa mo, you don't have to do that anymore. He is here. You no longer have to atone for your sins. You no longer have to kill animals. You don't longer have to do this for yourself. Jesus is here. But the thing is, they didn't believe. They didn't feel, they didn't realize or think that, okay, but you know what? This is something we've been doing for generation after generation, year after year. And you're telling me this is the Lamb of God. Are we supposed to kill him? And so they couldn't, they couldn't uh, reconcile that idea that Jesus, the Lamb of God, the perfect sacrifice, who would take away the sin. They can't, they couldn't accept it, they couldn't understand it. Kaya parang sa kanila, eh, ito na lang, mas madelito eh. Ito yung alam ko eh. This is what I've been doing, this is what my father taught me, my grandfather taught me, this is what we've been doing as a family for generations. Why will I let this go? If it's working. Okay? They've been doing it for so long. And many times we might be like the Jews who are holding on to certain practices, certain religious doings, certain religious practices, certain things to compensate for our sins and mistakes. We do all of these good works in order to make ourselves feel or think that we're right before God. Whereas, for example, if you commit a sin, and there is this guilt that's consuming you from the inside. What do we do? We, 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 we tend to panic and then we just grab our Bible. Oh, I, just, I just need to read five chapters. I need to pray before God para lang ma balance yung scales. And we tend to do things sometimes even unconsciously, unintentionally. But it's a feeling that we have in order to offset our sins and mistakes before the Lord. Many times it's out of a motivation of guilt where we, where we do something wrong, we commit a sin, and because of that guilt, it pushes us, it moves us. It leads us to restitution. And the being restitution, it's doing good things to make up for the wrongdoing. Uh -huh. uh, because we feel that, you know, even if Jesus says, I'm forgiven, parang feeling ko may kulang eh. So we try to make it up on our own, try to compensate and work out our own salvation. We help someone, we give money here and there, we bless someone, hoping that this feeling of guilt will disappear. And magiging okay po tayo with the Lord. Where we can come before the Lord, Lord, I did this for you. Sometimes when my wife and I get into an argument, Siyempre, ako po yung may kasalanan. Okay? And minsan, feeling ko hindi sapat yung pag magsasorry ako. Sorry na. Pero siyempre, ganun pa siya. Please, don't be mad. So, sometimes what I do to make up for my wrongdoing is sometimes I would buy her makeup. I'd buy her lipstick. Peace offering. Okay? Sometimes it works. Okay? 
And sometimes we do things like that before the Lord. Na parang, Lord, parang gulang to. Alam ko, you forgive me. Sabi sa Bible, I am forgiven. But Lord, I, I feel I just need to do this. I just need to do this good thing, this good deed to make up. Kasi sobrang grabe kasalanan ko, Lord. Iba eh. I don't think it's something you can really forgive. Okay, Lord, let me, let me just do this, Lord. Motivated by guilt. But what does the Bible teach us? And as much as we would like to pay and make up for our wrongdoing, our sin, the reality is the wages of sin, as Romans 6.23 tells us, is death. And sin separates us from God. We are far, we are distant from God. But Romans 3 tells us that we are all sinners who and we and, and because we're all sinners we are unrighteous before the Lord we nothing that we do can ever make up for our sin we all fall short of the glory of God that's why it was only God himself who made a way to reconcile us to himself to say in barang you don't have to do anything ako na bala He would send his son, Jesus Christ, the perfect sacrifice, the perfect lamb, to be offered on the cross, to die on the cross, to be an atonement for our sins, and to pay the penalty of all of those who believe in him. Jesus was the perfect lamb of God. He was the perfect sacrifice. He was the only one who could truly take away all our sins and allow us to become right before the Lord. It's only through Christ that we are made righteous. It's only through Christ, just as we went singing kanina, that we are cleansed. Nothing but the blood of Jesus that can make us right before God. He was the perfect lamb. Again, John declared this, behold the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And another thing or another way that John could say this or you know, another thing that John could say regarding this is behold. What Jesus has done for you on the cross, uh, behold what Jesus has done for you on the cross instead of holding on to what you can do for him. All right? Behold what Jesus has done for you on the cross instead of holding on to what, sorry, kulang pala yung word, on to what you can do for him. Many times we're holding on to what we can do for him, what we feel we need to do for him. But Jesus is saying, no, 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 I have done it for you. All you need to do is behold Jesus. Look at him. Fix your eyes on him, the author and perfecter of our faith. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You see, there is no other sacrifice worthy of our sins other than the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. And the good news is, for all of us, that the perfect sacrifice needed for us to be reconciled with God, to be made right with him, was from him, was of him. Ibig sabihin, it's not the lamp of Bojo. It's not the lamp of Adrian. It's not the lamp of Ryan. It's not your lamp. Hindi kailangan yung lamp mo. Kaya it says the lamp of God. God was the one who made the way. It's of him, from him, for us. So that we could have that right relationship with him. No longer it is yours to give. No longer do you have to offer up your lamb, whatever good deed, whatever good works that you feel that you need to compensate for. No longer. For it is the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And when we say that it's the lamb of God who takes away the sin, this word that's used here, who takes away the sin, the original combines the words to bear and to take away. So Jesus, the lamb of God, didn't just he took it upon himself. He bore it upon himself. The weight of our sins, the wrath of our sins, the guilt and the shame of our sins. He took it upon himself. And then he takes it away. He didn't just parang tinanggalang, parang magic lang. No. He took on that shame, he took on the sin itself. And a picture of this that can be found in the scriptures, if you look at the Old Testament, was the picture of two goats. In the Old Testament, what they would do, okay, is they would bring uh, two goats to the altar. One goat 
was slain, was slaughtered at the altar as an, a sacrifice, as an offering of sin. And the other goat was let go, was set free to run into the wilderness. The idea was the second goat that was alive would take away the sins of the people. And when it goes, wala na. Your sin is gone with the goat. And this is where we actually get the term scapegoat. Where somebody takes the fall, where somebody takes on the responsibility or the punishment or the consequence of someone else. Okay? But G- and, and then that picture relates to Jesus who bore our sin, like the goat that was killed. He was the perfect sacrifice. At the same time, he takes away our sin as far as the east is from the west. That is a picture of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. Jesus took our sin. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, that God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. He didn't just take it, guys. He took all, he bore it himself. He became sin for us so that we could be made righteous with God. That's the good news that we have here today. There's no longer a need for a goat for we have been given the perfect lamb. And that is Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And take note here. Sometimes when I read this passage, sins of the world. But the word that is written is singular lang, sin. And what Jesus does as the perfect Lamb of God, he takes away the sin of the world. Hindi lang yung mga sins natin. Yes, he can do that. But what Jesus came to do was to take away the sinful condition of man, the root of sin in our lives. Kasi kung tanggalin yung sins natin, okay, that's good. But the tendency is we will do it again. But what Jesus came to do more than 2,000 years ago was to deal with this the sinful condition of man that came about through Adam. And he came to bring about healing, to bring about reconciliation, to redeem us, to set us free from the bondage of sin, the power of sin in our lives, the sinful condition of man. Kasi kung hindi, lahat po tayo hanggang ngayon, paulit-ulit yung ginagawa natin, which is just sinning after sinning after sinning. But that's why Christ came, so we can have hope. We can have hope to live a righteous life. We can have hope to have a life before God. We have hope to have a right relationship with God the Father because of Christ, who is the Lamb, who takes away the sin of the world, the sinful condition of man. And the good news is, it wasn't just for the Jews. Jesus didn't just come to the people of the, of the Israelites, the chosen people of God. He came to take with the sin of the world, Jews and Gentiles, that's you and I. He came to redeem us, to save us. And when John the Baptist said this statement, it was a pretty bold statement, you have to understand that. Kasi si John the Baptist, yung audience niya, puro mga Jews. So kung nung sinabi niya, the sins of the world, bakit yung may ibang tao parang, so pati mga Samaritans, pati mga Gentile? Parang, whoa, no. It was, ano eh, it, it was, it was uh, uh, culture breaking. Parang, no. The Messiah is for the Jews. That's what they were brought up to thinking, to understanding. And I think when John the Baptist actually said this, parang he declared this, he proclaimed this, without, I think, feeling ko lang, hindi niya fully na comprehend that Jesus taking away the sin of the world. Yet the reality is this is true. Jesus did come to take away the sin of the entire world. In John 3, verse 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to what? To save the world, all of humanity, through him, the perfect lamb, the perfect sacrifice. Jesus did not just come to make good servants, to, uh, to tell people about love and all of these messages. No, 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 no. He came to save the world, not to condemn it. That's why John could boldly say, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And this wasn't actually the, first, the only time that John the Baptist says this. A couple of verses down in the same chapter, verses 35 to 37. 
He says this, the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus, he looked at Jesus again, he behold it, behold it, behold in him, beholding, basta beheld. Okay. as he walked by and said, behold the Lamb of God, there it is again. And listen to this, the two disciples heard him say this, the two disciples of John the Baptist, okay. I believe they were there in verse 29, and here they are again, hearing John the Baptist declare once again, behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. What does that tell us? It's not enough for us to know Jesus. But when we encounter him, when we behold him for who he is, receiving him and knowing and acknowledging that this is the son of God, the lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, there's a compelling in us to follow after him. To behold the lamb of God is a call to believe in Jesus and to follow him. And that's what happened here. Two disciples of John the Baptist, iniwan nila yung teacher nila. If this is who you're saying you are, I'm, I'm going with this guy. I'm sticking with him. If you're saying he is the Lamb of God who takes away this, my sin, I'm going with him. I'm following him. It's an invitation for people of the world, for you and I, to believe in Christ and to follow him. Once again, our greatest need for salvation was fulfilled through the greatest gift we have been given, and that is Jesus Christ. And this is my message for you this afternoon. It's a record, I think, Mitch, no? <laughs> but it's simply it. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. I want to call on the worship team, and I actually... Uh, ask them to sing this song for us and we can stay in our seats and as they're singing this song I want to just to reflect on this song you know uh, the song is all, called All Calm All You Unfaithful and when you hear the title parang oh grabe naman masyadong straightforward diba? but when you actually listen to the song it's a powerful song that invites people to come just as you are, come broken and all, come to know Christ who is born, come to know Jesus, come to know the Lamb of God who was given for you and I. Amen? So I want our worship team just to lead us into reflection, into listening and worshiping the Lord through this song and then I'm, we'll close. Thank you. 
We're going to continue in our attitude of worship and prayer as Pastor Bojo's preaching. Again, repeatedly said, Behold the Lamb of God. And this song calls for us to come, to come and see who this Jesus is. And this whole series, itong buong series, Unwrapping the Present, is an invitation for all of us, for you and me, to really know the very essence the very reason why we can celebrate Christmas and it's only because of Jesus Christ is sacrifice on the cross him being the lamb the ultimate and perfect sacrifice for our sins and the word behold once again it's an invitation for you and I to look and see to believe and trust and put our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ alone and we want to extend that invitation for everyone of us here. If you are that person, hindi mo pa lubusang kilala ang Panginoong Heso Kristo sa buhay mo. Hindi mo pa napagdidesisyonan sa buhay mo na tanggapin siya bilang Diyos at tagapagliktas ng buhay mo. You don't have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. This is your day to behold the Lamb of God jesus christ and to accept him as your lord and savior and if you are that person if you want to accept jesus christ as your lord and savior kindly quickly raise your hand as so that i could pray for you if you want to accept jesus thank you for that hand thank you for that hand at the back if you are that person you want to accept jesus as your lord and savior pray this prayer with me Panginoon, patawad sa lahat ng kasalanan na nagawa ko. Sa araw na ito, Jesus, tinatanggap kita bilang Diyos at tagapagliktas ng buhay ko. Tulungan mo ako isa buhay ang buhay na gusto mo para sa akin. Ikaw ang aking Panginoon at ang, ang aking Diyos sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Let me pray for everyone. Lord, thank you for your sacrifice, for your life, for your resurrection power, proving to us na ikaw lang ang makapagligtas sa amin. Ikaw lang ang makapagbigay ng kapayapaan, kapatawaran, pagmamahal sa amin, Panginoon. Ikaw lang ang siyang may kakayanan at may karapatan, Panginoon, na baguhin kami at bigyan kami ng bagong buhay sa mundong ito. Maraming salamat for who you are in our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. The Bible says, as one repents, the heavens rejoice. So let's celebrate with those who have come to the decision to accept the Lord and as their personal Christ. You know, if you were blessed by this message and this series, you know, as Adrian said kanina, itong message na is really just unwrapping the present, who is Christ. And if you have friends, you have relatives, who you want to be able to receive Christ to extend an invitation, we'd like to encourage you to invite them next week to our service so that they also may hear the message of the gospel. Amen? Can we just uh, close our eyes and let's pray as we uh, conclude our service this afternoon. Lord, thank you. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for the Lamb of God who takes away all of our sin. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can walk with our heads up high, not because of anything we've done, but because our confidence lies in Christ, the perfect Lamb, the perfect sacrifice who takes away our sins. Lord, thank you, Father, that as we go, may we go with the love, with the compelling in our hearts to make you known in our lives 
lives and through our lives. May you bless your people here today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all. See you next week and invite your friends and family. Oh, hi guys. Welcome to our Victory Greenhouse YouTube channel. Now, if this is your first time here, we're glad that you have joined us today. But if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Now, if you are here, we hope that today's message will bless you, it'll encourage you, it'll speak life to you. But more than the message itself, we would like to encourage you to be part of our church community. And you can get connected through discipleship. And we want to invite you to be part of one of our victory groups. If you're interested, please do let us know. You can comment, you can message us, you can text us, whatever. Just let us know how you want to get connected so that we can plug you in. Now, as we get ready for today's message, we pray that the Lord will bless you as you listen to the sermon today. God bless you.